So a few weeks ago, uh, Katie Part, the author of the book uh, Status Quo, was on the show, and uh, she presented the idea that basically uh, the Bible on Christianity was invented with the express purpose of oppressing women. Uh, but before I get on to my stuff, uh, just quickly, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think this is accurate? I don't think the Bible was written expressly to oppress women. Yeah, it had so many authors over so many centuries yeah. and then edited and then revised and collected in anthologies, th books thrown in, books thrown out. Um, I, I'm not sure that there is a singular purpose for the, for the book. I think it can do particular things and I think it does yeah. harm to the cause of, of women's rights and freedoms. But I, it, it, when it's taken uh, literally, let's say, okay. Um, but uh, I don't know that I would say that there was like some theme beyond making a state religion for Rome. Right, okay. So, I just wanted to ask because that statement uh, didn't strike me as true on a sort of gut okay. level. I think that, we might but, be in some mild agreement here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it got me thinking, you know, if, if it wasn't the Bible or religion in general that created that sort of society that oppressed women, then how did it come about? Oh. And okay. I, I gave it some thought and I ended up in a very surprising place and I wanted to run it by you, see if you can spot some error in the reasoning, because if you thought the abortion was touchy, well. <laughs> <laughs> Here goes nothing. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> and yeah. Just to paint a nice big disclaimer on this, I'm not a fundamentalist, I'm actually quite progressive, I think. Uh, I'm not trying to apologize for the phenomenon of oppressing women. I'm just trying to have a sort of dispassionate look at what... You're just trying to figure out where the... it came from. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'd like to start with uh, two uh, premises, which I hope we can all agree are fact. The first is that back in ancient times, life was very short and dangerous compared to the present day. The second one is that uh, when it, just as a consequence of how human biology works, when it comes to population growth, uh, women are the bottleneck, uh, by which I mean if you have a hundred women and a hundred men, you can make a hundred babies. You mean a hundred women yeah. and one man? Yeah, I yeah, think that's well, what he was that, saying. Is that that, the yeah, but he, was, he said a hundred men, but I, I think his yeah. point was you, you don't need that many men in order to produce yeah, a lot exactly of children. My point. So yes. if, if half the men die, whatever, yeah. the remaining 50 men can still make But I do want to say, I just, I just want to bring up one point. On your first point about life being short and hard, um, there are some people who say that life expectancies and lifespans in the ancient world were not that different than they are today. It's just that people died more in infancy. So you have this average age of death that seems sh small, like seems right. younger, but really if you survived infancy and you survived childhood, you would probably go on to live a pretty decent lifespan. Um, so I didn't do a whole lot of research on this. I just went on Wikipedia and what I found there, I didn't follow up the source. Which yeah, is I mean, you're going to well, see a shorter I'm lifespan very... listed on, a, on as an average, but um, a no, lot no, of that no, is brought no, down no, by no, infant okay. death. What, what I found there is, life expectancy after the age, once you had reached the age of 15, was still like 40 or something like that, up hmm. to 30. Okay, well maybe maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think that probably varied depending on Where what you, part of the world you were living in. Maybe. Yeah, and not only and, that... And, it, you know, just if you think about things like yeah. uh, the complete lack of health care, you know, you can cut your finger, it gets infected, you die. Uh, you, you work with dangerous animals that can gore you every day. So in, in that sort of context, well, sure. yeah, I, I don't think it was impossible to, for someone to uh, reach 80 or 90 okay. years of age. But I mean, I'm following your points. I'm, I'm following your points so right. far. Yeah, okay. So those are the two basic uh, starting points. The first is that life is what And the second is that uh, women are uh, more valuable to the growth of a population, which means that there's a, an incentive there 
on a societal level to keep women safer and let all the men go out and do all the physically dangerous stuff because they're more expendable, right? Okay. I'm following you. I'm not, when I say okay, okay, I'm not necessarily in agreement, but, I, but I'm, I'm following. Okay. And you might ask yourself, what's so special about population growth, right? Why, why couldn't we have a society that allows women to risk their lives and safety and we just take the hit to population growth? And that could work for a society in isolation, but if you have a, a different society in the next valley over, who do focus on population growth, then it won't take long before they outnumber you and they can invade you and extinguish you. And it will be there. Okay. Sort of, so uh, I'm still following. I'm still following. Right. So, okay. Uh, which, again, is very unfortunate, I would agree. But the fact is that it looks like there's a, a sort of selection pressure on societies to focus on uh, growing as, as fast as they can. But that only works if they're in competition for resources. Well, well wait a minute. I mean, if we, I'm still tra I'm still waiting to get to the point where women get oppressed. I yeah, mean, I'm great. still waiting to hit that point. I have a ways to go. Oh, uh, can we fast track yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going okay. to stop. Okay, okay. I'm going to stop interrupting. So, no, Jen raised a valid point, but I'm going to keep going. Uh, we can come back to it later. So, the other point is, if life is for and children die, and yeah, Tracy you mentioned this, that infant uh, death was very uh, common. So, but if we take what we just said, that population growth is really important, but you don't live very long to raise children, and uh, you know, even if you successfully give birth, you have no idea if the child will grow up into adulthood, then it looks like the best bet is to just play the odds and start making children as soon as you can and, and just keep making children because, you know... Okay, all right, keep have, going. We're, 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 I'm following. Children, you can, I'm following. Can yeah. Okay, go on, next point. But, so, there's an incentive for... Uh, people, basically teenagers who have just hit puberty to start making, to go away and start making children. Except that women die when they have ch children at early ages, like right. when they hit puberty. That, that's when most women die in childbirth is when they start having infants too early. So if you okay. want to preserve the women, you have to wait till they get older. Right. Okay. So maybe not right, right as they hit puberty, but fairly soon. The point is you don't have like 10 years to date around and stuff like that. Um, Although you could make a lot of babies in 10 years of dating around, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, but we don't uh, generally, the uh, idea is that we want people to get married and then start making babies. And this is where women get oppressed, but I'm wondering why, like you, you're well, saying. Uh, the, the, not, not just yet. Okay. So, <laughs> Where I'm going with this is, okay. you have an incentive for young people, let's say not exactly uh, 15 years old, but young people to uh, start making, to, to get married and start making children. Okay. But we also know that young people are fairly bad at long-term strate strategic thinking and who you get married to and who you have children with is kind of a long-term strategic decision. But it doesn't so, have to be. Well, but it ideally is. Why? So you get you get better decisions, you get better results if you apply long-term strategic thinking there. Wait a minute. Now well, you now you're starting to lose me um, okay. in a big way. Because we have societies, um, for example, in the Amazon that have partible paternity. They don't understand right. that, um, for example, one guy can produce a child with a woman. They have the attitude that many men are involved in producing a child with a woman. So they have a community situation where they raise the children sort of communally. And by having multiple men sleep with this woman when she's conceiving and, and when she's pregnant, and by letting her have free range of sex, all of the men who have had sex with her around the time of the pregnancy 
are considered to be fathers and then they all participate in the upbringing of the child and they are more involved so that the child has more people actively involved in protecting it and looking out for it because they all feel like they have this paternal interest in the child. So to me, that would be a great, a better model because the whole society then would chip in and you wouldn't have to have this sort of, well, what if this person picks a person who isn't really helpful and then the child is in danger? If you have the whole community doing it and the woman is having free sex, it seems like that would be a better way to keep women pregnant. Huh, that's interesting. I, I didn't know that. Um and protect the children because well, let's say that the actual biological father is, is kind of like a dork right and he goes off and gets himself yeah. killed doing something yeah. uh, you know wacky and then you still have four or five guys who are like hey we're still here that's still our kid well okay I, I guess all I can say to that is clearly that's not the society that has evolved in right uh, right I guess the sort of biblical uh, societies uh, they were very much big on having a designated father. Right. What we do is we lock down the women. And if you want to know what the anthropologies, uh, anthropologists would suggest, it's that when you have property, inheritable property at that, and you have an understanding of paternity, right, then it becomes very important that the woman that you're with doesn't have sex with other men because you have to leave your property to those kids and you don't want to leave it to someone else's kids. So it comes down to you have heritable goods and you know that, that you want to make sure that child is yours. Right. Okay. So uh, at the end of the day, there's still then a, I guess, plausible reason for uh, this sort of, well, not exactly monogamous, but uh, I guess what we consider traditional marriage to emerge. Well, because yeah, I mean, so societies that have property and that have an understanding of, of how children come, you know, biologically are, are produced by a single person, uh, especially a single man, and also where women are not um, considered to be contributors, right? So if you have a society where uh, women actually are big contributors to the resources, they have a lot more sexual freedom and they have a lot more equality within those societies. So when women are barred from contributing, um, but that, but that's kind of what happens when you have to lock them up, right? So if you want to, if you want to be one hundred percent sure that this baby is your baby, you have to lock her down. You have to get her married before she hits puberty. You have to get her with yeah. this guy so that he's the only one that can have sex with her, and you have to put humongous penalties on her sexuality if she should, if she should have sex with anyone else, because they have to ensure that that child is their own in order to leave their wealth to their own child. It's a, it's a really sick. Um, well, m motive, <laughs> but it's so, yeah. okay because we, I guess what you say, um, treating women themselves as property mm -hmm. isn't essential to what you just described. So there can still be a society that's very well, the husbands are very protective of their wives, but they don't actually treat them like property and they don't buy them for money, right? Well, yes, I mean, I'm, I'm very that's, protective that's kind of, of my, my wife, if, but I don't treat her like property and I didn't buy her for money. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of where I'm going with this is that there's actually, the way I see it, it's something of a, a selection pressure for uh, societies to organize themselves in such a way that has these uh, very asymmetrical gender roles where the women stay home and they stay safe and they're very well protected by the men who go out and do all the dangerous stuff. Well, well women well, hunt and gather though. There's like yeah, hunter gather so, society. There's hunter gather societies where these women are yeah. out gathering and there and there are jaguars and stuff out there. I mean, yeah. it's it's not and, like it's safe to be wandering around, you know, pulling up roots. Well, and and then, well, yeah, and, but it, it's safer than hunting mammoths. I well, guess. I mean, so, I don't know. Well, go ahead. Okay, so. Um, Hunter, like Tracy pointed out, hunter-gatherer societies, I mean, they were, from what we know, they were much more egalitarian because women had just as much access to the resources that the hunter-gatherer group uh, needed. And we still as, have them today. As, yes, I mean, this we is do. not a we thing of the past. Right. <laughs> this is, I mean, it and is so, in the past, but. So, you know, it, it, we really see stuff like, you know, locking women down when we start to have 
like Tracy pointed out, this concept of property rights. And that came about with the advent of agriculture. And so, um, and incidentally, that's when lifespan started plummeting because you had a reliance on, you know, specific types of food. And if you, your crops didn't make that year, oh, everybody starved or lots of people did. So there were lots right. of impacts on people. But one of the interesting things, and I, I read a paper on this many years ago, and it said that um, you only find um, morally concerned gods in, locace, in locations where there are constrained resources. And so, you know, the ancient Near East was one of the most resource constrained areas. I mean, it was literally feast or famine some years in terms of, you know, whether their livestock and their crops would survive. And that's where, um, you know, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam originated. So, um, you know, this idea that, um, you know, the resources are a critical thing is something I think um, has a lot of currency out there. You know, yeah, access right. to resources. But also, I mean, it's, it's super important to bear in mind that if I have a baby, I know who the mother is. Right. But the guys around me, they don't know who the dad is unless they lock me down. And so if it's mm -hmm. important, if it's important to know you're the dad for some reason, then the, you're, you're going to want to restrain me and my sexuality, and that's what's going to happen. But if it's not yeah. important, if it's not important to you whether or not the child I give birth to is yours or not, then what do you care about my sexual yeah. freedom? There's no reason right. to lock but, it down. Okay, but so this all kind of makes sense then with what Jen just said, because if there's very limited resources, then I, as a father or as a as the head of a family, I want to really, really hang on to my resources. So right. I want to make sure that it's my children who receive. So I guess at the end of the day, what I'm saying is that uh, there's a line in the sand, right? Which is the treatment of women as property. And there's very plausible, completely secular reasons uh, for a society to organize itself in such a way where it has asymmetrical gender roles and arranged marriages at a young age but before without without crossing that line in the sand yeah yeah if you're if you're saying that there are there are plenty of secular justifications without going to the bible for people to oppress other people i think we're on board yeah I would and, agree. And actually, I, I did a okay. I did a lecture um, several years ago um, on marriage, and it was actually um, talking about marriage equality in particular. And it was in, in advance of the Obergefell decision. Um, and one of the things about marriage is that the church kind of was a relative latecomer to the institution. Um, Historically, marriage has been used as more of a, um, a way of cementing alliances or of ensuring that property got transferred appropriately um, oh. between families, um, and, and it was a political vehicle. Um, yeah. And so, you know, that's one institution that basically it started as kind of a secular social kind of thing, and the church kind of glommed onto it because they saw some value in getting a toehold into the institution of marriage. Yes, that's kind of my uh, conclusion here, is that uh, we have all these secular reasons to, for the society to uh, organize itself in this way, and then the religion comes along and acting as a sort of uh, moral authority, it, it, it codifies the, the uh, details of the society and, and cements them in, in ritual and then goes on to potentially uh, completely exaggerate them and corrupt them. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not a, like you said, something orchestrated like effort. Yeah, I think what you're uh, saying is the chicken, this and, is the and, chicken and, and the I egg, right? Then the chicken and the egg. What you're saying is that these weird ideas come first and then it gets enc encoded into a religion and that sort of cements it. Right. Yes, and the important point being that uh, the things that the religion cements 
are a product of the uh, historical context, basically. Sure. The environment at the time. I agree. But, mm -hmm. but the religion doesn't record the context. It only records the uh, results of, of the context. And as the context has changed yeah. over time, the particulars of the society that the religion has prescribed are no longer valid. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, yeah we, to be, not, to, not to be critical, but we could have started with that. I, I would have agreed to it um, without even the, the point by point. I, yeah. I think that's exactly what religion is, and that's why you see so many different religions in different societies, because they're all coming up with something that reflects the history of that culture. So okay. I think we're in agreement. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine, because I honestly expected you to... Yeah. I don't know, and I think you're right about it just sort of hits the, the, the conclusions. It's like a conclusion point. Right. And so you don't get this history. And so then people, you know, 2,000 years later are using this book and they don't even know why, you know, what is this yeah, thing and yeah. why was it and written. I, I, right. I think that's, that's an important thing in, in fighting religion too, is to recognize that it's not necessarily like completely a product of evil that it's just outdated, basically. Yeah, yeah, and um, evolves. All right. Well, okay. we're gonna we're gonna have to let I'm you go. Can I can I get my points in oh. regarding the previous topics real quick? Uh, make it quick. Very quick. So both with uh, the abortion issue and with the general morality and murder thing, I think what it boils down to is conflicting rights. So with abortion, you have on one hand the mother's right to control her own body as she pleases and you have the baby's right to life and where those two rights come into conflict it's the mother's right that takes precedence yeah i agree uh, and similarly the uh, in the because you know, if you have a burglar who's broken into your home and is coming at you with a knife or whatever right the burglar still has a right to life and safety and right. you have yes. a right to life and safety and possessions right and because those rights have come into conflict your rights take precedence i think that's a really eloquent way to express it yep cool. agree okay thanks all right well, thank you the, rest of the show all right thanks thank you bye-bye cool.